Hello everybody and welcome to another I Just Played, the series in which I discuss games that I just played, and I just played Gunmaster for the arcade. It was released by Metro in late 1994, and as far as I'm aware, never had a port to any console or computer. You might wonder why I picked Gunmaster to talk about of all things. Well, one of the aims of this series is to explore and play games that don't really get any attention. Now, they don't necessarily have to be obscure games, just ones that don't really get any love. There's no point in me doing videos on games that have already been done to death. So, Gunmaster. It's quite unique in that it's sort of a cross between a fighting game and beat em up with some run and gun elements. The closest game I could say it's like is Mega Man 2 The Power Fighters, which was a Mega Man fighting game released in 1996 and it's sort of in the same vein. Essentially how it works is you go from boss to boss battling them in a small stage before moving on to the next one. The way you battle is either by shooting your gun, punching with your fists or kicking with your feet. It's that simple. So in the first level it's very clear how this game will go. Fighting a small number of enemies whilst fighting a boss at the same time. The graphics are pretty nice. They've got that anime influenced 2D pixel style which is really nice to look at today and the backgrounds and sprites are all nicely animated. It's overall quite a pleasing game to look at and I think games that were made in this style still hold up quite well today. What is immediately obvious though is that due to the way the game works it will live or die in the level design. If each boss is fun and unique and features different gameplay elements it will be good. If not then not. So let's find out. After the introductory level, Gunmaster lets you take on any of the 12 bosses you like in any order, up until the final boss of the game. That makes it different from a lot of its contemporaries, but makes sense when you think about how an arcade works. Developers making arcade games would make them knowing that most players would never see the final stages in the game, so they must often wonder what the point of making them was. At least this way, players will get to see every part of it over the course of playing the game several times with just the final boss being the one that very few will ever see. The first boss I chose was this one with two ninjas piloting a big crab, which sort of reminded me of the Gratan from the anime Nadia, Secret of Blue Water. This level has you always running forward, and at the beginning it's a pain in the ass because you have to hold a direction button in order to shoot the gun. You need to place yourself in the right way to actually be able to shoot the boss, but you can easily go closer to the crab without meaning to. Eventually, it is possible to beat it, but you need to learn the pattern. It's similar to lots of games in that the bosses have very specific patterns that once they've been figured out are very simple to beat, but actually taking that time to learn the pattern results in lots of deaths along the way. One negative point about the game is that a lot of bosses require quite specific movements in order to beat them, which is fair enough, this is common. The negative part is that the character feels quite sluggish to control. Because the sprites are large, the main character physically takes up quite a large part of the screen, so dodging projectiles is quite stuffy as there really isn't the room to manoeuvre it just begs for more mobility. The boss characters themselves are all a little different. After the crab, I fought two buff dudes on a beach. There was no real strategy apart from holding them both off with a gun or getting them into a corner and mashing away at them. By this level, the game was starting to feel a little stale. It really would have been nice to have some sort of weapon upgrade system, all new weapons for each level or even items, but there isn't anything. The moveset you start with is all you get. In that sense, it more resembles a fighting game, but unlike a fighting game, the moves you can perform are very limited so the only difference level to level is the bosses and the stages. It feels like a missed opportunity really, as a lot of the other building blocks to make a great arcade game are already there. It's quite funny though that whenever a boss is beaten, even if they are just regular people, their death results in a huge explosion. So after the buff dudes, I took on Gemini 1 and Gemini 2, two steampunk dudes piloting robot suits. You can tell that the game was probably designed around the co-op mode rather than the single player, as many of the bosses feature two enemies rather than one, and are set up in such a way that having a partner would definitely make sense. It's not necessarily more difficult with one player, it's just that the strategies have to be more specific and leave little room for error. Sometimes the fights just end up in slugfests though, where you are just trying to lower their health enough before you die going for broke. After the Geminis, the boss is a winged lion, and they changed it up a bit so the player is falling forever and the battle takes place in the sky. Somehow, despite the fact you are falling, you are still able to jump, defying all laws of physics in the process. This fight was a ball ache to start with, because it's not obvious how to dodge the lion's attacks. But again, once you get a rhythm down and learn the pattern, it's actually quite simple. The difficulty came in changing the playstyle ever so slightly to accommodate for the change in level design, but mixing it up is always good. Next was a robot horse girl. This one wasn't too bad. At first it seemed impossible as the horse would shoot these really damaging bullets whilst rock came from the ceiling and soldiers attacked, but there is a little bit of a glitch where if you position yourself right in front of the gun, you can attack without retaliation. 
The time limit of each of these battles is just 60 seconds, though from timing, I think it's actually a little longer and the timer runs down a bit slow, but it does feel quite tight and when you win, it's only barely. Following the horse lady was a rhino knight. This is where the game's controls really started to become a pain, mostly because this boss has a simple enough tactic. The rhino rushes forward trying to impale and the tactic is just to jump over and shoot it from behind and keep doing that over and over again. The difficulty is that the jumping in the game is ever so slightly delayed. For a few frames, the player will still be moving forward before the actual jump happens, so all the normal gaming senses don't work, and you actually need to time the jump a little early in order to get it right. Eventually I adapted and got through the level, but I really wish the game just had tighter controls. So when the time actually runs out in a battle, the level doesn't end. Instead, you get attacked by this Thunder Knight that is really powerful. You can still win the level, mind you, and I suppose it's a better way of doing a time limit than just having the game end, but I think 60 seconds is a little stingy. I know arcades have to make money, but come on, give me a chance. Then we have a ninja known as Red Umber, that if he catches you off guard, can easily one shot and defeat the player easily. Manage to beat it eventually, and a witch called Marine. There's not a huge amount more to say about the game really. It's got some good points, it's got nice graphics, the music is alright, and it's a somewhat unique concept. It can be fun to fight bosses like this and learn the patterns, and when you do finally beat one, it is quite satisfying. There are negatives though, the controls just aren't tight enough, and there isn't enough variety to keep you coming back. It's the type of game that you'd play a couple of times and that would be it. It's obvious why a home port wasn't done, as there just wouldn't be enough of a game to warrant it. I do think this sort of concept could be done right, and to be honest, there still hasn't been that many attempts to do this kind of mixed genre. It was a noble effort, and it's worth playing if you have the chance, but not one to seek out. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe and tick the notification bell so you can see what I'm up to. I also have a Discord in the description and you can support the channel and see exclusive videos by clicking the join button and becoming a member. Thanks for watching. Goodbye!